worshiping. We welcome you here. Good crowd this morning. We love you guys and girls. We've been praying for you. If it's your first time here, let's warmly welcome each and every one. Amen. Hallelujah. We welcome some of our friends from the past. Miss Terry. We love her, sweetie. We welcome back Marlene. Amen. She's here today looking good. Praise God. If it is your first time here, we do welcome you today. And I know you received a welcome packet at the uh, front door here. And inside is information about our church, about what we believe, our pastors. And there's just a very short first time attenders card inside. Fill that out. Drop it in the offering bucket when it comes by. Praise God. Next Sunday. Say next Sunday. Next Sunday. June 15th, we have a short, say short, like that, a short mandatory ushers and greeties, greeties, <laughs> not greedy, <laughs> greeters meeting right after the morning service next Sunday. And we'll remind you again on Thursday and next Sunday morning. And also tonight, we have service tonight at 630 Come for a Holy Ghost meeting tonight. Praise God. It was good last Sunday, Pastor Steve. Teach, we've teach, been teaching on the gifts of the Spirit and the moving of the Spirit. Praise God. And we've been having what we preach. Praise God. So now we're declaring we are debt free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed today? Man, God's good. You look like a good, good-looking bunch of Holy Ghost people. Amen. Praise God. It's good to have you all here in the presence of the Lord. Amen. If we could, let's look at uh, let's look at um, Second Chronicles chapter twenty. I think you probably know this uh, verse, but. Second Chronicles 20, and the ushers are available if you'd like to have an envelope. We'd appreciate it if you did. So our ladies don't have to uh, fill out one for you. And we appreciate you doing that. And um, in this situation, there was like, I don't know how many, there was a hundred and some odd, 80,000 or something or more that were coming against Jehoshaphat the king and the people of Israel. And Jehoshaphat, you know, he knew that these people could wipe him out. So what is the first thing you do when you feel like you're going to get wiped out? <laughs> you cry out to the Lord, amen? <laughs> if you're smart, you will. And so in chapter 20 of Second Chronicles, it talks about how the sons of Moab and Ammon and, and the Mennonites and the, and got together to war against Jehoshaphat. And it was reported a great multitude was coming against him. And uh, then Jehoshaphat, verse 3, was afraid. And Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. That's the smartest thing you can do when you feel like you're outnumbered. Um, God will make you and him a majority. Amen. You know, once you've got him in your life, you are a majority over your enemies. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so they sought the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek him. And then uh, it talks about Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah. And uh, in the court he said, Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God of the heavens? And art thou not ruler over kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in thy hand so that no one can stand against thee. That you see, you see how he talked about God? He's bragging on God. God likes it when you start bragging on him yeah. and telling how big he is and how he can control and rule over every dominion. And when you got start lifting him up like that, they did that in Acts, remember? After they come back in Acts 4, and they said, Oh God, how great thou art, you know, who created all the heavens and the earth and the oceans and all that is in them. And then they began to talk about and brag on God, and they were together with one voice, and they prayed for the Lord to stretch forth his holy hand by his child Jesus, that signs and wonders might take place 
in his name. And as you know, it said right there, and they prayed and praised the Lord, and the building shook from where they came from. It shook, amen? And so we see here, it's the same kind of thing going on. And he said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are thou not God? Are not the ruler? Are you not ruler over all the kingdoms, including Moabites and all those dudes, <laughs> and the termites and every other mite? And uh, uh, did not God um, drive out before the people of Israel and give it to the descendants of Abraham? how God is, and then we need to talk about covenant. We need to remind him, we're under a covenant. You promised uh, to keep us and protect us and to bless us and drive out our enemies. And we, that you promised that you were for us and not against us. You said to Abraham, our father, that in the 12th chapter of Genesis, you said, I will bless you and I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those who curse you. In other words, if they're coming against God's anointed, they're cursed. Amen. Remember Paul? Saw he had a knocking off the horse experience. And then God turned him around because God's merciful and he used him as the greatest tool in the New Testament to whip the devil. Amen. The devil had him in chains and then he turned around and became his worst enemy. Amen. Amen. And that's why we got the epistles today. Thank God. And so the second thing you can do, first, pray to God and, and praise him for his greatness. Then secondly, call on the covenant and start to remind him that he's, a, he's blessed you, he's protected you. And he said that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are your forefathers and we're your people. And um, then he said here, should evil, verse 9, come upon this or the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, Oh, won't we stand before you in this house before your name? Now the third thing, and cry out to you that thou will hear us. The third thing is, use the name of Jesus against your enemies. Amen. If, if poverty, you know, poverty is an enemy to God. Amen. And so we need, we need to say, you spirit of poverty that tries to hold us in bondage. I cast you off of me in my household. In the name of Jesus, be gone. Amen. And when we do that, he has to go. Amen. Do you know that every force of heaven stands behind the name of Jesus? All the angels, all the uh, glory, all the hosts of heaven stand to back the name. So when you proclaim the name, every possible source that heaven has comes to your aid. I'll tell you what. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. So we see here that it's, you know, big, big of God. And then second, call, you know, remind him of your covenant, your blood covenant. Third, call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then uh, it talks about down here that the prophet prayed. You don't need a prophet. You already have the word of the Lord. And um, it says here in verse 17, the answer to the prayers is, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourself, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. On your behalf of Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be discouraged or dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Number four, don't be afraid of your enemy. Walk right into his camp and take back what the devil stole from you. Remember when David did it? He went over there and he... Uh, Zig Ziglag, and he just encouraged himself in the Lord. Everybody wanted to kill him, even his own men. And he said, no, I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to take back. I know my God. My God would not allow the devil to rip me off. So I'm going to claim it back. If you've ever lost anything to God, claim a double portion back. I don't care what it is. Loved ones, anybody. God will give you twice for your trouble. Double for your trouble. And he knows some of you have been hurt, and he knows some of you have been wounded over situations, but God is not the source of trouble and calamity. Amen. Just read the 27th chapter of Jeremiah, verse 11. It says, He is the one that cares for you, and he wants you to have a great, positive future of well-being, and only good and fortune. He is not the God, it says, of calamity. Satan is the evil one. 
And so I don't give the, uh, God credit for what the devil did. And then it says here, be not dismayed. And it talks about Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. Verse 18. And they began to worship the Lord. Worship is part of the whole covenant deal. Don't fear. Face the Lord. Worship. Worship your enemies. Or I mean, worship the Lord and face your enemies. Don't worship your enemies. Kick them in, in the butt in Jesus' name. <laughs> Now, <laughs> in verse 20 says, And they rose early in the morning. That's one I got to work on. And they rose early now in the morning. <laughs> and they went out to the wilderness. Thank God the Lord was fighting the battle because they were probably lame. You know, they went out in the wilderness. And Jehoshaphat stood and said, Oh, God of Jerusalem, we put your trust in you. And you will establish, and you will cause us to succeed. And it says, if you put your trust in the Lord, and you will uh, put your trust also in the prophets, we will be established. So there's a prophetic word from the Bible that says you will prosper and be in health. That God wants you to uh, prevail in everything that you do. Amen? And he wants all these good things for you. And then they went out in holy attire and they began singing, verse 22, and praising the Lord. They were doing what the Lord said, amen, praising them. And then praise came, the power of the presence of God came, amen, because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He hears prayer, but he inhabits the praise. So praise has to top their prayer off. It's like the icing on the cake for God, amen. And so it says there in verse uh, 23 that the sons of the Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, destroying them completely. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Daddy. See, God has already destroyed our enemies. We just need to enforce our victory. He's the captain of our salvation. But we enforce it by just using his name praising him, exalting him in every situation. And then he rises up and destroys our enemies before us. Doesn't I'm not talking about killing people, but Satan. And Now it's a different age. Um, but anyway, and it said that they came in Je Jehoshaphat, the people came to take their spoil. They found so much, including goods, garments, and valuable things. It took them three days yes. to take the spoil away. That means they keep loading up their, you know, whatever they had, Ford 150s or, uh, no, <laughs> they loaded up their, whatever they had back then, you know, and they, they were three days back and forth to get all the stuff. And so what we need to see is that poverty can be uprooted if we'll praise him, if we'll put him first, if we have an attitude that God is a God of too much. Because he is too much. And he will give you back what Satan has stolen. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for everyone in here under the sound of our voice. I just pray that if anyone be discouraged over their finances or over any other situation, Lord, we just invite you in to interject your goodness and your love and your prosperity and heal and restore all of our hearts and our finances and our every area that's been in our life, Lord. You said you restored us because you love the broken heart and you heal our wounds. So we thank you for making every one of us prosperous and blessed and whole and joyful in you. In Jesus' name, we pray and agree. Say amen. amen.
Jesus today. <laughs> He's going to slap somebody, high five, and say, thank God for his presence. Hallelujah. doesn't it? Praise definitely makes a difference. I appreciate people who love the Lord and have the heart to worship God and give them their talent. Amen. Amen. Not everybody will give you their talent. They'll give, they'll do it for the world, but they won't do it for the Lord. And uh, thank God for people who will. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God, I'm just excited today. God's got good things today. You know, he's got a word for you today. He has a divine word for us. He really does. It's just bubbling in my spirit. I'm just really excited about the word that God has. And uh, I just, you know, I was telling Pastor Steve, I said, you know, I just kept on and kept, because I just don't quit. <laughs> You know, and, and when you're seeking the Lord, and you know he's given you a word, but it just doesn't completely just settle, you know. And then and, and he says, this morning I was getting dressed, and we were driving here. And he goes, you doing okay? I go, yeah. I said, I got the word. I said, you know me. I won't quit. I'll stay till I get it. And uh, I got it, though, praise God. And, and even finished writing some of it on the, on the drive here. And so, you know, sometimes... He uh, has to talk a little more to us ministers so that we make sure we hear what he's really wanting to give to the people. And so uh, I'm just excited about the word today. And it's a divine appointment today. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So how many of you love the Lord? Yes. How many of you know he's done some incredible things for you? Oh, yes. Yeah, your hands never went down. That was good. You know, I think praise is so important because we need to be reminded that uh, what he has done for us. Isn't that right? And when we start to praise the Lord, you know, we may go feel this way, but when we start to lift him up, you know, it's like a balloon. We start getting lifted up also. And, uh, you know, I was just reminded of something that the Lord did for us when we were way back uh, starting in the ministry. And I started getting teary-eyed during praise and worship because he's just so doggone good. And, you know, if you can't remember anything that the Lord has done, just start to praise him because he's good. And he will open up the whole buffet table to you to remind you of what he's done. Amen. And uh, we all have something to thank God for. And uh, I just I just want to talk about that today, about the so much more, because he is so much more. Is he not? He's so much more. Say that. He's so much more. Turn to your neighbor and say, He's so much more. Now you turn right back to your neighbor and say, He's so much more for you. And yes, He is. Amen. And so we're going to look at that today. I just want to give you a couple verses to start out with. And uh, we, did, we did look at the word last week um, concerning, we talked about the favor of God to some degree. But we talked about, uh, just very quickly, we talked about how to develop our faith. You guys remember that? We talked about how to develop our faith. And, and we labeled it the God of the breakthrough for our house. And he is our God of breakthrough. Amen. Amen. But in that time of studying that and, and de developing that message, the Lord had uh, re reminded me of those seven steps on how to believe God. Yeah. And I want to quickly give you those just for a second from last week because some of you weren't here or some of you needed to get them. And uh, I remember I used the illustration that at 211 degrees, it's hot water, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but it takes one more degree for boiling water yeah. to come. You know, 212 is the boiling point for water. Right. 
And 211 doesn't cut it, but 212, that water begins to boil and it produces steam and steam can move a locomotive. Yeah. And so that's what sometimes we need to do is we need to press in one more degree, press into the things of God, press into what God has for us, and just put in a little bit of extra time. Just a little bit more praise or a little bit more studying of the word or a little bit more of confession of God's word. And we'll get into that boiling point and, and, and that locomotive not only will you know, move it, but it will cause people to jump on and you can you can go somewhere. Amen? And that's what God wants. He wants our faith to move us, but it, well, He wants our faith to feed people too and, and to move them along with us. Amen? And uh, because we're, we're a body and we're a family and we should encourage each other. Amen? And so we looked at this just, I'm just going to quickly give them to you. Number one, you know, we got to have faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That was the basis of everything. But then we looked at how faith stands. Faith stands. And, you know, having done all to stand, just stand there for. <clears throat> and we talked about, that wasn't my first point, but the first point was faith sees. Have you been thinking about that this week? I've been thinking about it a lot. Faith sees. You know, um, when you see yourself doing something, you know, have you ever got a new car? How many of you ever got a new car? Come on. Or any car that you just really liked and you finally got it, right? I love this illustration because we need to see ourselves blessed. We need to see ourselves free. We need to see ourselves over it, right? Whatever the, the, the stuff is. And faith sees it that way. You know, faith calls those things that be not as though they were, right? And so faith sees the victory before it actually happens. And it's kind of like when we begin to see it with our mind's eye, we need to use the Word of God more vigilantly as a sword. You know, it is the sword of the Spirit, and it rightly divides the joints and the marrow and the flesh and the Spirit. Isn't that right? And so when we're, when we're seeing ourselves like God's Word says, like if you see yourself whole, even though you may not be able to walk like my dad, remember I told the story, he was paralyzed from the neck down. But I called him from here, and he was in Lakeland, and I said, you know, see yourself moving your toes. See yourself. And, and you know, within that evening, he began to move his toes, and he got up. He saw himself that way. And it's kind of like that new car. I remember, uh, you know, I, I found this new car I really like. And so I, I get out there, and praise the Lord, you know, we buy it. And after buying it, I see it everywhere. Yeah. You ever see that? Yeah, well, why is it that I didn't see it before? Because I wasn't looking for it. You get that. And uh, that's the way it is, and that's how important it is to see ourselves with the things that we know that God has provided for us. Because if we begin to picture ourselves blessed or whole or pregnant or married or free or disease free or you know put your area that you're believing for if we begin to see that then what happens is we begin then to be more sensitive so that when we're walking through life we recognize it when it's upon us yeah, amen. amen and that's the way it is with the car you know I, I i've got this car and i'm like wow i'm gonna be like the first one driving it and i get the car and everybody has it <laughs> Well, I wasn't aware of it because I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't seeing myself in that. But when I named it and I claimed it and I got it, well, everybody had it. And uh, you know what? We can have the promises of God. Amen? And so faith sees it. That was one of the things. So we, we, these are just how to develop our faith. Faith sees what you desire. Amen? His word is provided for him. Amen? And for us. And then the second thing is faith speaks about it. Right? Right? The woman with the issue blood, if I may, but just touch his garment, I may be whole. She said within herself, if I'm, and what happened? Well, she got there. Yeah. And uh, she beat crowds, and she was probably like a football player a little bit, but she got in there and she got her healing. And so faith speaks it. It talks about it. Amen? And man, as a man speaketh, or thinketh in his heart, so is he. you got to speak what you believe for. Then the other thing is faith takes action. We looked at that. Faith takes action. you got to do something about your faith. You don't just go, oh, I believe, but never do anything about it. Well, I want to grow and, and, and make more money. Well, go back to school. you got to do something. Amen? Somebody, you got to do something. And so faith does something. Faith takes action. Amen? And then faith stands, having done all to stand. That was the point there. Faith stands, having confidence that the Lord's going to move. And then we did that today. Faith rejoices. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. It's only right to praise God. Well, he hasn't done it for me yet. Well, he's going to. He actually already has. Think about that. He's already really done it for us. Right? 1 Peter 2.24, we'll just use that verse. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses and diseases. Right? By his stripes, we were thank you, Pastor Jim, healed. We were healed. We were healed. But you don't understand, Pastor Sharon, I'm sick. No, you don't understand. Let's not look at how you are. Let's look at how you were. He were. We were healed. So if we were healed, that means we are healed. But I'm sick. No, let's get off the what you are now. Let's look at what you were. Yeah. I can get you to look at what you were. You can become what you already are. He already did it. He already did it. Amen? And so we just need to thank God that it is done. It is done. And uh, we have the promises of God, but we are becoming a recipient to line ourselves up to be able to receive the promises of God. So it's really us that needs to do the changing. Amen? God never needs to change. He's perfect, isn't he? And then the other thing is if, if uh, the other point, number whatever, <laughs> you, number five, you, you sow toward the vision. Yeah, you sow toward the vision. It's kind of five, six, just whatever you want to put it as the point. You know, if there's anything you're going to be doing, you know, like uh, I just sowed to, uh, we just sowed to missions this week because we're still believing in missions. And our frame of friend from uh, when we graduated is going to an area near Croatia. And uh, so we, I said, honey, I really want to sow to that because I want to go back on the mission field too. So I'm believing and I'm sowing towards somebody else's dream. Amen. So if you have a dream, sow towards somebody else's dream so that you can see their dream come to pass. God will bless you. Amen. And then the other thing is faith rest. Amen. The battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. And then, you know, I just love that because we're not savior of the world. You know, and uh, part of that today was like, you know, I uh, had a very busy day yesterday, and it was a little different. And so you get up a little late, and you just feel like you're running. And today's a day for about a 20-hour day of work. It'll be, I'll be still working at, you know, 2 in the morning this morning. And so getting here, wanting to make sure the word is right, and it's like, you know what, I can't do this. Thank God I'm not Savior of the world. He is. Praise the Lord. But a 40-hour week, half of it's like on a, you know, Sunday. <laughs> and so praise God. But you know what? I love it. This is what I love to do. I mean, I would be bored if I could not preach the lively oracles of God. So, you know, no complaining out of me. But sometimes you, you, you have to just rest in the promises of God. That having you done everything that you can do, you know, you pray like you know there is no Holy Spirit. But then when you get in the pulpit... You lay back like the, he's the only one that's going to do it. Amen. And so let's just agree today over the services. Can we do that? Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to just be in the house of God. We love you, Lord. You are an amazing God. And you have done incredible things. We love you. And we just are expecting a great move today. We've already received so much. Just the praise and worship has set us free and, and put us on the path of victory, Lord. And Father, we just thank you that today our heart is good ground. And the things that you have for us, Lord, you won't even have to use man. You can just do anything. You will use me, Lord. I thank God for that. But you'll speak through your people, yeah. and you'll rise up, and you'll teach them things that I may not even be talking about. Yeah. But you will give revelation, and you will give grace deposits and truth impartations. And that's what we believe for. We're expecting. We're expecting to have our needs met. We're expecting to have our answers met. And, and just whatever we need, we thank you that, that no one will be left. No one will be unsupplied. We'll be fully supplied. We'll be amply supplied as the word gets ministered. Yeah. And more than anything, Lord, renew our minds. Oh, just take out our thinking and put in your thinking today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Well, let's go on over to Psalm 86. Psalm 86. I want to turn to a couple main portions of Scripture, then we'll get into the Word. But I always like to start out with the Word of God. Psalm 86. I'm <clears throat> going to talk about so much more. So much more. And uh, Psalm 86, it talks about over here. <clears throat> 
Verse 17, Psalm 86, 17. Show me a sign for good. Show me a sign for good. That those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, O Lord, has helped me and comforted me. Amen? He has comforted me. Amen? And so that's Psalm 86, 17. 86, 17. Let's go over to Psalm 44. Psalm 44. Just a few back. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Psalm 44, verse 1. O oh God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us the work that thou didst in their days, in the days of old. So here we see. The fathers are talking about what God has done for them, and he's teaching, they're teaching it to their children, amen? amen. That's what we should be doing, amen? amen? Number two, that thou own hand did drive out the nations, that thou did plant them, that thou did afflict the people, and thou did bring and spread them abroad. For by your own sword, say his own sword, they did not, say they did not, possess the land. And their own arm did not save them. Woo, amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. What does it say? Thy hand and thy arm and the light of thy presence, what it saved them. Isn't that right? For thou didst favor them. Thou did favor them. So what are they saying here? We found out. Hey. What God did for my father and my grandfather, you know what? It wasn't because they were super smart, or maybe they were really smart, but God didn't use their smarts. God didn't use their strength. God, God didn't just use their ability. It was by his own arm and his own mind, right? And that's the way God's going to move for us, right? Why? Because we are favored of the Lord. We are favored. Say that I am highly favored. Woo, yeah, amen. We're highly favored of the Lord. Amen. So from now on, we shouldn't trust in our just ability, right? We need to trust on him. Look to him because he is the one that will highly bring favor to us. Amen. Amen. Woo, woo. Talk about the favor. Woo, woo. So how many of you can finish this statement? Mirror on the wall. You've been watching too much Disney. <laughs> no, no, no. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror. The word is a mirror. Talks about that in James. The Bible says if anyone looketh in the mirror and he walks away and he forgets what manner of man he is. See, the favor of God is all in the word of God. It's all over the place. But the devil wants to deceive us. To say, well, you know, the Lord will move for, you know, so-and-so because they always live right. They don't ever do anything. They don't even, you know, they don't ever do anything. They're just like squeaky clean. No, God's going to move for us. Yeah. You know, we just may have made mistakes from time past. Anybody ever done that? Oh, yeah. My, my, my. You know, and you try to be good and you try to be perfect, but sometimes you still blow it. But God's going to move for us. It's not by our mind. It's not by our power. But it's by His Spirit. Amen? And thank God we can relax in this. You know, he, He's got the whole world in His hand. I remember, oh good, Yazzie's not here. Okay, she's in you. I remember when she was little, you know, she used to say, Mom, sing that song. And, you know, He's got the whole world in His hands. And so... You know, I'd say that, and, and, and so then she'd throw in what I, what I was supposed to, who had, what does he have? And she said, he's got the itty bitty babies in his <laughs> itty bitty babies. You know, got the mamas and the papas. And so it's like, you know, that was the Lord using her to cast the cares on the Lord. And she's just praising the Lord. And you know what? He still has a whole world in his hands. And sometimes we just need to go back to day six. You know, number one, he's got the whole, he's got me in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies. He got the one that messed up in his hands. Right? Because he favors us. We are his children. And if he has the hairs of our head numbered, come on. 
Why? There's no reason. But you know what? He's showing us that we are so much his beloved. And that everything that touches him and touches us, touches him because we are the apple of his eye. And he knows about us. And when we talk about him, he says that he, he puts it in a, in a book of remembrance every single time that we talk about him. That's amazing. Woo, I got chills on that one. I mean, any time we talk about him, he writes it down and puts it in the book of remembrance. One day we're going to see that. Woo, one day we're going to see that. God's a good God. And when we wake up, he's already been singing over us. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. We're going to make it, guys. And not only are we going to make it, we're going to make it, and we're going to make it in style, and we're going to make it in victory. And the things that he's put in our heart, we will fulfill. We will fulfill the plan of God. Amen? And so, you know, I just sense a lot of care today and a lot of worry. And if I can just be prophetic, he's got it. He's got it. So we just might as well chill out. Amen? And just, like, you know, picture yourself in the hammock. You ever got a hammock? I love hammocks. Oh, I love hammocks. And you just need to picture yourself laying in a hammock, and the hammock is the Word of God. He's got us. And any way that the devil may try to come in, you know what? He can't get through that hammock because we're wrapped up in the promises of God. And we won't fall out because no, no one can snatch us out of the Father's hand. Amen? And so over there... Uh, the entrance of the God's right, and that's that mirror. We gotta, we've got to study, and, and sometimes we've got to remember who we belong to. We don't belong to our genealogy of parents. We belong to God. He is our Father. Amen? And so, you know, the devil, he, he's the biggest dece deceiver. He's a liar. That's right. That's what it says. He's a liar and the father of all lies. He loves to be deceptive. Amen? But deception is believing a, a, something that really isn't true. And not knowing that you're believing it. That's deception. When the devil lies to us and deceives us, we believe it's truth. And we don't know any different until the mirror on the wall tells us differently. And we are favored today. Amen? He's got so much more for us. Say it so much more. So much more. Now over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Yes. Right? Amen. You hear me now? Amen. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every single word be established. And I want to talk about how God not only gives us favor, but he also backs it up with signs following. Hmm, interesting. Want to hear about this? I, I, want to, I want to preach about it. And so it says over here in Corinthians, in Corinthians 13, 1, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So God's saying, you know what? When I'm going to tell you something, I'm not only going to tell you, but I'm going to confirm it because I love you that much. And the devil may come in and talk loud and proud, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to raise a standard up against him. Yeah. Amen? And so you may have been struggling with something, or you may be believing for something, or you may be dealing with some things, but God says, I'm going to confirm my favor to you Amen. with signs following. Over there in Mark 16, verse 16, it says, and these signs shall follow those that believe. Yeah. Woo-hoo! These signs will follow those that believe. We could just camp right there. Well, what kind of signs? Well, it says, you know, they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak in new tongues. They take up any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them, right? Verse 20 says, and the Lord went with them everywhere. The Lord is with us everywhere. Amen. Confirming his word to us with signs following. Yes. Amen? And so God has a way to bolster or boost our faith. He not only gives us the word, but he gives us things to bring about the remembrance of the word that he has spoken unto us. Do you get what I'm saying there? And, and he, he 
wants us to keep our faith active. He wants us to keep our faith believing. He wants us to keep our hopes high. And, and he'll paint a picture for you, and then not only will he paint it, but he'll give you that word. You ever, you ever read a word and it just leaped off the page? That's what it's, that's a, that's a miracle of God. That's the word, that's the Lord confirming the word with signs following. Can I give you a few examples? Okay. Um, over there, I'll give you a, a verse, but the, and we'll turn to it in a minute, but I'm going to give you some actual stories. We'll go to Luke 8 in just a minute. But some examples. Uh, anybody ever heard of John or Joel Osteen? Amen. Yeah, okay. And some of you have. How many ever heard of Joel Osteen? Okay, good. You know, his mom had cancer. We talked about this last week. And uh, she saw herself whole. Remember that? And so here she is. They were just diagnosed with the cancer. And, um, you know, it was discouraging to John. We hear a lot about uh, Dodie, but we don't hear a lot about how John went through it. And John was a mighty man of God. I love John Osteen. I love John Osteen. I had the honor to go and, and hear and be in his church at one time, just visiting when we went to do a street conference in, in Texas. We went over there, and uh, they were just an awesome church. And um, so John got the news, and he took his wife home. And, you know, they said, you know, any day she can die. It could be as soon as two days. She could be dead. She could just drop dead. And he said, thank you, doctor. We appreciate your good advice, and we're going to go home, and the Lord's going to heal her. And he was very kind. And so he brought her home. And so, you know, she got in the Word, and we know the testimony. She's been now cancer-free for over 35 years, praise God. It was an incurable disease. But uh, she put the word in her heart and in her mouth and before her eyes. And we talked about how she put even pictures of her completely whole. So anywhere she looked, she didn't see a sick woman. She saw a beautiful woman. She saw herself in the prime. And so, but John, he got home from the hospital. And, you know, he's fighting being a little discouraged. But you know what? God is a shield to those who walk in integrity. He favors us. Lord God, Son, and Shield, He gives grace and glory. No good thing does He withhold to those who walk uprightly. And so, you know, sometimes you need the Lord to be your shield, you know? And you need Him to paint a picture for you because you kind of see it, but you're not fully formed in that. And, and you know what you, you know? And then there's the devil, and then there's people, right? And so you got to stop the whirlwind and just get locked in with the Lord. Amen? And so He got in there, and, and He was hanging up His jacket, and and, uh, you know, he's just saying, thank you, Lord. I know it's all going to work out for your good. It's all going to work out for your good. And he, put a, he had put his Bible on the bed. And as he was hanging up his, his jacket, he said, the, uh, he turned around and he saw the Bible. He, it had, he had, when he put it down, it opened up. And he said, all of a sudden, the pages started turning. That's amazing. It's amazing. And, and he said they just kept on moving, and he looked, and there was no air conditioning going on. So this is the, later on, they refer to this, this particular story as when God turned the pages. And so uh, obviously we know she was healed, but he said that as he looked, the pages just kept turning and turning. And he said when he walked over and stopped and to look at the Bible, it stopped. And it, he, he looked down at the verse, and right there it said, and there was not one feeble one among them. He brought them out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble one among them. That was the word of the Lord. He said, I take that, Lord. <laughs> I take that, Lord. She's not going to be sick. And, and so through that time, he stood on that. Because not only did God give him the scripture out of the word of God, but any time he was a little shaky, he remembered that the pages of the Bible were turning for him. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so, hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen! And so, uh, I know that there's a, a place in the Alps. I had the privilege of going and, and flying over the Swiss Alps when I was going to Croatia. And they have this beautiful place that you can hike up. Now, everyone that walks freely and they have no handicaps, but they're just like a normal person, they can, they can hike to this Alp area. And they have this really beautiful, beautiful cafe, uh, cafe right on the side. It's halfway, the halfway point, okay? And so they get, they see this every, every time they take a tour of, of this particular area. 
and countryside. And they said they'll have like maybe 50 people that they've enlisted to, to walk all the way up to the Alps, to this particular peak. And, uh, but they said this, they said that they'll start with 50 people, you know, and what they have noticed is they hike up and they're all excited and they got all their little cool boots on and their gloves and all the things that, you know, that they're in, you know, the mood to do. And they said that once they get up to that halfway point, there's the cafeteria. Anybody know what's going to happen next? <laughs> so they, they get that nice cup, cup of cocoa and their little croissant and they have really good food there. And so they've eaten and enjoyed the beautiful view and they said, okay, now we, we're done with our break. We're on the second half. Wait, you can't wait. You want something to just be beautiful. They said over three quarters of the group stops because they settled for where they were. And God doesn't want us to settle for where we are. He wants us to keep on going. He wants us to look in that perfect law of liberty and to say, hey, that's what God says about me. That's what God says I can have. Well, I am going to press in and go for it. I'm going to just push in one more degree. Amen? And so God will do that. He will give you a sign, and he will give you a wonder. He will give you a word. He will give you, we call it a rhema word. Amen? A rhema word is a specific word for a specific person. Amen? Amen. With a specific situation. And you know what? It's, it, and when you see it, it's got your name all over it. Isn't that right? Now let's go over to Luke chapter 8. Can we do that? Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> I love this. And so God wants to show us signs of his favor, yeah. signs of God's favor. So Luke chapter 8, let's go over there real quickly. I know you guys are probably pretty familiar with this portion of scripture, but I just love this uh, verse. It says it really good. Luke 8, are you there? Yeah. All right, so we're going to look at verse 40, Luke 8, 40. Luke went, went over. Okay. And Jesus returned, the multitude welcomed him, for all had been waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was an official of the synagogue, and he fell at Jesus' feet. And he began to entreat him to come to his house, for he had only one daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes were pressing against him. So here's Jairus. He has one daughter. She's sick. She's dying. And he said, if I can just get to Jesus, I know I'm going to see my daughter healed. But as he began to get into the flow of where Jesus was, there was the crowd, right? Cares. The, the, the seeking of searches. The desire for other things come in and what? Choke out the word of God, right? we got to press in sometimes. And so circumstances may try to come in and do that, amen? And it says, and as he was being uh, toward Jesus, multitudes were pressing against him. And what happened? A woman who had an infirmity, a, hem a hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and she touched the fringe of his cloak and immediately her hemorrhoids, her hemorrhoid, her hemorrhage stopped. <laughs> are crowding and pressing upon you. But Jesus said, someone touched me in faith. Amen? Amen? And power has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she, and when the woman saw that she had not a way of escape, she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Amen. Praise God! Nature miracle. Not so great for Jairus, though. He's happy, but he, he's all he's thinking about is his daughter, his daughter, his daughter, his problem, his issue, right? And and you know what? He knows that God wants to heal his daughter, but he's got to get to him. And there's all these obstacles in the way, but God's got favor for him. Amen? And I love this because the Holy Ghost knows what we need. 
He always knows what we need. He never quits. He never quits on us. Even when we quit, he still comes up and kisses us on the back of the neck. Go, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. It ain't over yet. Amen? Woohoo! Amen. Hallelujah. Preaching myself happy. <laughs> And it says right here, so she was immediately healed. And and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Amen. But while he was speaking, someone came from the house of the synagogue official saying, your daughter has died. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. Well, it's over. It's over. You're too old. Nope. Nope. Can't do it now. What you had in your heart, you can't do it anymore. <laughs> That's what we need to say to the devil. No. Amen. We don't receive that. Amen. Anybody see that lady that was like 80-something years old dancing uh, with uh, uh, that, that dancing, that British show, So You Can Dance? Anybody see that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This lady was about 80. No, I'm sorry. She was 85. Because reason why I remember, because she was the same age as Caleb. When Caleb said, I'm 85 and I'm well able to take another mountain. Remember that scripture? Yeah. This lady was 85 years old. You Google it. Google the people who can dance in Britain, that show with Simon Cow, okay? So you think you can dance. That's the name of it. This lady comes in, and she's 85, and she looks 85, okay? But she looks pretty good for 85. And uh, she's with this really young guy. And so, of course, you know, they're already like, gonna bonk her you know and so they start out and she's dressed pretty nice you know and she's 85 and he's a real tall good-looking guy really muscular and and uh, so they start them the song and they're just you know kind of swaying for a minute and so you know within like 30 seconds Simon just bonks and you know so she's out but you have to have one more yeah. but all of a sudden the music began to change and this 85-year-old woman was thrown up in the air, and she did a split, and she flipped over, and she went between his legs, and she did all the kind of things that I have never done in my life and couldn't even begin to do. And this woman could, I mean, she could touch her head to her head, I mean, her toe to her head. I mean, this woman was doing you name it, and it was done. And, and everybody, they were falling out, including Simon. And by the time it was over, Everybody was in a standing ovation. And everybody couldn't deny that this was a miracle. And, and, and they stopped the show. And they said, <laughs> what in the world is going on? And she said, well, I was a dance instructor. And she said, and I loved to dance. And she said, but I had four children. And so I put it aside. And she said, and after they were grown, it was just me and my husband. And she said, and my husband just died. And I didn't have anything to do. And she said, and I began to get depressed. And she said, and I saw just down the road from my house, there was an Arthur Murray dance studio. And she said, you know what, I'm just gonna go and just dance just to have some fun. And she said, the next thing she knew, she was in that you know, dance contest and they won. I mean, they won. I didn't have to look it up. If they didn't win, you know, they should have won because it was, it's like she needs to be in, you know, Ripley's Believe It or Not book because it was amazing. And I'm telling you, God can do anything. And, and it ain't over until he says it's over. And that woman was 85. If I, I, will, I will show you the clip. It is just, you will laugh. It is, it is astonishing. It is a sign of wonder and a miracle. And, but you know what? We started a softball team uh, for our church. And um, half of us are, you know, totally not, haven't done this in 30 years, okay? And I'm telling you, I'm like, you know, we're all sore. I mean, we would get up and every single thing in your body would hurt. But we decided we're not quitting on this. And we're playing with young kids and we're competing with people that we don't even know. So not only do we look bad, but we look bad in front of all these other people. And it's like, oh my goodness, Lord, what are you doing to us? And we said, we're not quitting, we're not quitting, we're not quitting. And even if we strike out every time and we trip over our shoelaces, and sometimes we did. I mean, sometimes we got balls in the face and trip over and, and, and fumble and fall through first base. But you know what? We didn't quit. And every week, every week, 
every week we were getting better. And I'm like, whoo, I, I mean, you know, I thought, you know, me and Cheryl were talking about, we'd work out. We thought we were in shape, and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my leg is still swollen. It's like it's been swollen for six weeks. It's healed, but it's like it's still been swollen. And, and every week, one of us would have an injury, but we haven't quit. We haven't given up. And, 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 you know, now we almost won our first game. I mean, the first game, we lost 19 to, like, 1. I mean, it was brutally embarrassing. But then the second game, we did better. And this last game, we really should have won, but they kind of called the wrong thing, and I won't get into it because it's not one of those everybody is wrong but you, you know, no vampires. No, we really did. We could have been tied. Next week, which is coming tomorrow, we're doing a double header and we're well able to take the win. Yeah. Now, yeah. but you know what? That first week, I knew the Lord wanted us to start it, and me and David Jr. were saying, "We're just starting it." We started it like that, and before we knew it, the whole thing was filled up within 24 hours. That whole team was filled up, and we had more than more than enough. But you know, during that week. Oh, that old mind of mine was going, what are you doing? You know, you know, you're like, mm, and this many, and this many, and this many, and this, oh no, I'm not looking at my age. I'm going to look at what the word says. And I, the word of the Lord came about Joshua and Caleb. He's well able at 85. Well, I'm not 85. I can do baseball. I can do softball. And then I saw that, so you think you can dance. Woo, that just got me up. Woo, let's do it. And then I, I watched something else, and it was like right in the middle of a TV show, my favorite TV show, they had this major Olympic winner. I mean, this woman has won four major medals, and she's in her 40s. And she, the first medal that she won, she won when she was like 17, okay? And we're talking Olympic swimmer, swimmer here. She, she just threw out everybody else's time. She blew them out of the water. And she set records. And uh, so she was like 17. But now she's like in her 40s, and she went back again. Ha, 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 ha. See, the Lord brings things to get you to move. He sends things to encourage you. And, and so I see that video, and there it is. She's doing it again. And everybody in her swim team that's in the Olympics calls her grandma. She says, that's okay. Grandma's got a few things to still show you, young whippersnappers. She came back, and not only did she beat her other record, she got another record. She got two records at that age. So you know what? Who says we can't do anything that God doesn't tell us that we can do? We, can, we are well able to do anything that God wants us to do. Amen? But we just got to study and show ourselves that the Word is what it says it is in our life. Amen? We know the Word so, but is it so in our life? Yes, it is. It is so in our life. Amen? And so let's keep on going here. We stopped for a commercial. Ha, ha, ha. And while, verse 49, and while he was still speaking, someone said, hey, your daughter's dead, right? Yes. Verse 50, but when Jesus heard this, what did he do? He answered him, do not be afraid Amen. any longer. Only believe, and she shall be made well. Isn't that right? Yes. And what happened? Well, we know she was healed. Yes. God, God, Jesus came in, and she was just exactly what Jairus had believed for. And Jesus stopped him, though. He stopped him at a critical point in his faith when he's ready to throw in the towel. And he not only gave him a word, but he gave him a picture. She shall be well. And God will do that with us. Don't let your dreams go down. Don't quit believing big. Don't settle for halfway up the mountain. Let's go all the way with what God has called us to do. Amen? And so he says that over there. These signs will follow them that believe. Amen? Over there in 2 Kings chapter 20. Let's go there real quickly. I'll be closing in a minute, but I want to get this into you. Can we just take another second here? 2 Kings 20. 2 Kings 20. Praise God. You ever heard the story about Hezekiah, how he was dying? Yeah. Amen. Remember that story? He was dying. And what happened? He turned his face to the wall, did he not? And he cried out to the Lord. The world may say it's over. It may be your time to be over. But you know what? We can pray and believe for more. Amen. Amen. The fact that he puts it in your heart 
desire whatsoever things we desire, God puts the desires in our heart. And so go with the desire that's in your heart. That is just as if God is speaking to you. The fact that he puts that desire in you, that is the anointing. That is the drawing of the spirit to say, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, we're going to do this together. Amen. And so the fact that you desire to still do some things, that means God wants to anoint you to do that. Amen. So in 2 Kings 20, he said, you know what? You're going to die. You're going to die. But he said, he turned his face to the wall and he prayed and he cried out to the Lord. And the prophet came back and turned around. He says, I'm going to give you 15 more years. Remember that? But you know what? It wasn't still good enough. Because it says over here, he still wanted a, he still wanted a, a word, he still wanted a verse. And he says over there in verse 9, and Isaiah said, this shall be the sign. God wants to give us signs. He desires to give us signs. Yeah. This shall be the sign to you from the Lord. And the Lord will do the thing that he has always spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps or shall it go back? Wow, hmm, he's thinking. So Hezekiah answered, it's easy for the shadow to decline 10 steps. Nah, but let the shadow turn backwards 10 steps. And Isaiah the prophet cried to the Lord and he brought the shadow on the stairway back 10 steps by which it had gone down on the stairway of Isaiah. And so what happened? God gave him a sign. Not only did he give him the word that he was going to live 15 more years, but he gave him a sign to prove it. Amen. And so, you know, the next 15 years, I bet you he, if he ever got attacked, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. I'm going to die before my time. No, no, God gave me a word. Oh, not, not only did he give me a word, but he gave me a sign also. He gave me something to touche the devil. I remember Brother Hagin was on his deathbed, and he was crying out. He's like, he knew in his heart he should be healed. And he didn't know about healing. He didn't know anything about healing. He was a Baptist boy, and all he knew was about salvation. And he asked for people to come pray, and when they come, they just come and talk about what they were going to have for his funeral arrangements. And uh, Brother Hagin was a great man of God. He, he uh, started Rama Bible Training Center, and uh, I'm a Rama graduate from that. But he said one day as he was reading his Bible, he just was like crying, you know? And, and, and it wasn't the cry of pity me because, you know, we could cry those kind of cries, but that's not prayer. So you gotta be specific, amen? And so he was specific. He's like, Lord, I, I know that I'm supposed to live longer. And, and he said he kind of dozed off to sleep. And, and then the next thing he heard is, with long life shall I satisfy you. Amen. He woke up to a voice, with long life shall I satisfy you. And he's like, who said that? And you know what? Let me just say something. If you ever hear voices or you hear the word of God, someone speaking a word, it'll check it out if it's God through the word, yeah. the Bible. Amen? Yeah. So he said, who said that? And God said, Psalm 91. He didn't even know that was in the Bible. So he, you know, grabbed his Bible and flipped over there. And sure enough, the last verse, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen. God will show you a sign and he will give you not only a sign, sometimes you'll be in wonder and amazement of how good he is. I remember Pastor Steve grew up with a young guy who was one of his very best friends of all his whole life. This guy was a covenant brother. And uh, he, uh, they parted ways because he came down to serve the Lord. And uh, this guy, he ended up going into working with the School of the Blind. And he was a very exceptionally sweet man. And um, he had problems with alcoholism and, um, you know, some other issues in his life. But... He was a good friend of Steve, and there would be times that Pastor Steve would pray for him and just have a burden for him, and he knew that probably his friend Bill would eventually die because he was just feeling it in, in his spirit, and he's like, I have got to go and visit my friend Bill. And so there was a time, he went one time in New York, drove up there just to see him to check on his salvation. <laughs> the Lord's so good. And he got over there and he spent time with them. And, his, and, he, and, and this guy's such a great guy. He not only um, worked with the School of Blind, but he, he lived with his dad. His dad was very old and, and he just, he did so many incredible things for his dad. So he just lived with his dad. And uh, so he, he helped his dad all these years. And 
So they had a really great time, and he witnessed to him, and he ministered to him, and, and but you know, sometimes you just, you, you wonder, did they really get it? Did they really get it? And, and uh, so he's like coming home, driving, and uh, he still had a burden. And so, you know, you pray when you have a burden. And so he prayed for him, and, and he said, Lord, I just really love my friend, but I need a sign. Sometimes you just need to know, you know, like when his mom died, he needed to know she really was saved and she got filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, that was a good sign. <laughs> and so we need signs sometimes. And so he's like, Lord, I just, I, he was my best friend of all time. And I know, I know, I know that he's going to, I know he's going to be saved. But did he really hear? Did he really hear? I just really need a confirmation. And he said, as he's driving home, he said the next thing he knew, he looked up and one of the things that he specifically prayed is, I just need to know that Bill heard. I just need to know that Bill heard. Because if I knew that Bill heard, then I know that he got saved. And, and so he let it go, and, and he turned the radio on. And he looks up, and as he's driving, he sees this really big billboard that said, Bill heard Chevrolet. <laughs> and when he saw that, he started laughing in the sky. Got it, oh. And you know what? We know we heard. Yeah. I mean, that is a sign and a wonder. And, you know, it's only, it's, you know, we need to remember that when these things happen, this is not coincidental. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things I really want to say. Let's be attentive to these signs. Yeah. God will use nature. God will use bill. He'll literally use a sign and a billboard. He will use family. He will use friends. He will use dogs. He will do whatever he can do to get that confirmation to you that he is not only giving you his word, but he's going to give you a sign to follow. Amen? And why? Because he wants us to know that he's got us. And he wants to strengthen us during the time of the standing and strengthen us maybe through the trial or, or strengthen us because it may be a long wait. And sometimes when there's a long wait, he uses spectacular means to prove that he is really moving on the scene. Amen? Did you get something today? God's good, isn't he? Say it. He, be he believes in me. And I believe in him. And I am highly favored of the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that I give you my life today. I just ask you, Lord, refresh in me. Your will, your, will. Your, desires, your desires, your plans. Oh, amen. Let's just, just, let's just pray for a minute and let, let that word sink in. Lord, we want your will. We just pray for your will for our life. You said you know the plans that you have for us. Plans of good and welfare, not calamity. And we just, we just seek you on that right now. We just, we just, let's just pray in the spirit a little bit over the plans of God for our life. Thank you for the will. Thank you for the plan.
Thank you for being refreshed in your will and in your way, Lord. Oh, we just release fear and cares, anxiety, pressure. We just set aside all these cares, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. Thank you, Father. We love you. Say with your eyes closed, your head bowed. No one looking around. Just been dealing with some issues in my life, just major things. I just need some extra prayer. Got some issues. Maybe physical, maybe material, maybe just in the emotional. We we have our areas. But we need to be covered in that prayer. Amen. So if you need prayer, don't be ashamed. That's what we're here for. Amen. Thank you for lifting your hand. Anybody? Yes. Thank you. You need anything at all. We're here to serve you. Thank you. I see those hands. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Anybody away from the Lord, if you need the Lord, you, you haven't received the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you're not really sure. Let's get that settled right now. Amen. If, if that's you, you just want to have a no-so salvation, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Anybody at all. Not sure that you really pray this prayer that's scriptural to get you into heaven. Amen. I want to make that a priority right now. Anybody at all. Maybe you're away from the Lord. Not sure if you've backslidden. You just haven't been feeling close to the Lord like you know you should. You know, God wants to Yes, renew that. Good for you. Amen. I thank you for lifting that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. I see that hand. Yes, I see that hand. Praise God. It's a new day. Amen. Now I want to encourage you that as we pray this prayer, you draw a line in the sand and say, this is the day. Amen. This is the day. And those of you that lifted your hands that need prayer just because of the areas of the pressure zone or the cooker, the pressure cooker, you too draw a line in the sand today. Amen. We're going to have a, a fresh perspective today as we leave this building. And that's what I love about the, the, the place of God because he wants us to come in and he wants us to leave our burdens at the altar, leave our cares, our anxiety, our inabilities to produce results. And he says, I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And he works in ways that we can't see, amen? And he will make a way for us. And so, Father, I lift up the ones that lifted up their hands today that have those needs and have those cares and they're being harassed. I just bind that devil right now in the name of Jesus. We don't have to yell at you. You're under our feet. We apply the word of God fresh and anew. Strengthen my brother. Strengthen my sister. Lord, we thank you that you're the one that fights their battles. We thank you that the battle is the Lord's. It's not ours. And that as we wrap ourselves in the promises of God, you're carrying us. We don't have to carry our Christianity. Our Christianity carries us. And we can just lay back now and fly into the realms that you want us to fly. So I break that care right now over their minds, over their bodies. Any harassment you go now, devil, in Jesus' name. And Father, you said that commit our way unto you and you will bring it to pass. So that's what we do today. We commit it fresh and anew to you. And you are able to touch and to heal that which concerns us. Now bless my brother and sister right now. Relieve that pressure. Ha ha. <laughs> and let the joy of the Lord be their strength. Ah, Just receive that right now, fresh and anew. And if you need to rededicate your life, just say, Lord, thank you for forgiving me. Let's all say that together. Lord, thank you for forgiving me. I make a new commitment today. I'll go where you want me to go. Do what you want me to do. 
but I can't do this without you. Help me, Lord. Release your strength inside of me. I thank you, Father. That's what you're going to do. Your anointing is a time-release capsule, and when we need it, it just it releases, and it's ever vesting into our spirit. <laughs> so we thank you for surcharging the saints of God today, and that the plan of God will prevail in our lives. We bless the people of God today. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is a good God, is he not? Amen. Amen. I want to go out reading this verse. It says, show me a sign for the good and for your favor that those that have hated me shall see it. And the Lord says, I will help you and I will comfort you and I will give you favor. Amen. So let's just lift our head and thank him for the favor that we have today. Lord, we thank you that favor is ours and it's a cloud of favor around us and we poke it now with our praise. We poke it with our hands. We poke it with our faith and we thank you that it's going to rain down fresh favor upon our life, fresh perspective and fresh thinking. And we thank you, Lord. on the spoils of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You get something today. Oh, praise God. Pastor Gail has a word of the Lord. She operates in that sometimes. You know, the Lord comes in and confirms the word with a word or a sign. Go ahead. Mirror, mirror in God's book, you have shown us how to look. Not by what we may possess, but put on clothes you give to dress. Eyes that see the way you see, and fulfill what you declare of me. For your word declares my good, and how a child of God should look. And in the mirror of your word, my spirit lives by what it's heard. It paves the way for me to walk, and teaches me the way to talk. By saying what you say of me, it sets me up for victory. I shall become what I declare. God's word is how it gets me there. As I reflect the image seen, it manifests the Father's dream. So keep God's word before your eyes and let it from your spirit rise. Say it, and it comes to pass when you agree with God and act. Amen. That's what I call a good review, amen? Let's give the Lord a shout for that. Thank you, Lord. She'll have it typed up by tonight, and they'll be back on that credenza. And so one of the things that we love to do when that happens, when we uh, make that CD, we usually attach that word because that's a sign and a wonder that God's really on the word of God, and he wants to move. Look how he moved through that. Just to just what an amazing word. God loves, he must really love you. You must be pretty special to him. You must be his favorite. Why don't we say that? I'm God's favorite. And if God's going to do anything for anybody, he's going to do it for me. Amen.